Hi there everybody, so this video is looking at evolutionary relationships and how we use DNA sequencing to work out uh, the relationships between species. So if you have species that are closely related, they will have more similar DNA. So let's have a think about why that is the case. If we take some species which are alive now, and we look at their DNA sequence, we can work out which are more closely related to each other. So here we've got four uh, imaginary organisms and you can see a section of their DNA sequence. Now in reality, scientists would look at a much longer section than this, of course, and they could even look at the entire genome, although um, it's probably more common to just take a section. And that section of DNA will often be taken from the mitochondria, so they'll use mitochondrial DNA. Now if we look at these DNA sequences, we can see that uh, these two organisms have very similar sequences and they only differ in one base. We can therefore say that these two are very closely related. If we look at the next two, we can also see that they have similar sequences to one another and they only differ in one base. So again, these two are very closely related to each other. So these two are more closely related to each other than they are to these two and vice versa. But why is that? Why can we say with certainty that if the DNA sequences are more similar, then they are more closely related? Well, we have to um, have a look at how these species have come about. Now we know that species evolve from pre-existing species. So if we were to go back through their evolutionary history, uh, we could come up with this common ancestor um, and we're going to say that this was three million years ago. So if we look at the sequence of uh, bases here, so the DNA sequence here, we can see that it is different from any of these. And that's because over time mutations occur. Uh, they occur randomly. Uh, they actually occur at a fairly regular rate throughout time. So if we were to then look at how this species evolved, a million years later, it's obviously not the same species anymore. So changes have occurred as a result of mutation, natural selection, and so on. So two million years later, if we were to look at the same DNA sequence, we can see that there's been a change. Okay, so there's been a mutation here. Um, and the organism also it, it no longer looks the same. So this is a different species to this. Okay, so they are separated in time. At some point, speciation events occur. So at some point, this species separated um, through the process of speciation in two different species. So in between two million years and one million years ago, that happened. And so if you look at the DNA sequences of those organisms a million years ago, we can actually see that the se DNA sequence here is the same. It hasn't changed. Now remember, that doesn't mean that the genome hasn't changed. We are just sampling a section of it. And it's possible that that section is identical. However, in the other species, that arose from the speciation event, we can see that there has been a change. So we've now got another base which is different than it was in the pre-existing species than its ancestor. And of course, we've now got two species here which were closely related. They share a very recent uh, common ancestor. Their DNA sequences are different to one another but they are very similar because they are quite closely related. They only separated uh, a million years ago. And then at some point between these species existing a million years ago and now, there were other speciation events. So this species speciated into the two species here that we see today. And this species speciated into these two species that we see today. So what we have here is an evolutionary tree. It's also called a phylogenetic tree. It shows the evolutionary relationships. 
And so from this, we can understand why more similar DNA sequences in our um, present day species mean they are more closely related. If we look at these different individuals, in fact, if I just go back, this species here is the common ancestor of all four of these species. And we can see if we compare the DNA sequence, the DNA sequence is quite similar to all of them, although not identical. However, this species is a more recent ancestor for these two. They share a more recent common ancestor with one another than they do with these two species. So the common ancestor for all of them was two million years ago. The common ancestor for these two is only one million years ago. So they're more closely related because they share a more recent common ancestor. And because mutations accumulate over time, there will be fewer mutations if the common ancestor was more recent because there has been less time for those mutations to accumulate. Likewise, these two species have got a common ancestor, which was also quite recent, a million years ago. So that helps us understand why species that have more similar DNA are more closely related because the mutations take time to accumulate and the uh, so therefore the more similar their DNA is, the more recent they shared a common ancestor. Okay, so let's look at um, some slightly more complicated DNA sequences and see how we can look at the similarities to work out our evolutionary relationships. So here's a sequence to start with, and we can compare it with several other sequences from different species. Now we can see that these are all very similar. I've highlighted the differences in different colours. So from this, we can see that these two species are the most closely related. And in fact, these two species have got exactly the same DNA sequence in this section that we're looking at. Again, remember that doesn't mean that they're the same species, it's just that this section from the genome is identical. We can then see that these uh, two comparisons are equally as similar to one another. So that's because this sequence here and this one are the same, and they are both very similar to this sequence. They only differ in one base. And then finally, these two sequences from these two species are the least closely related because there are more differences between them. If we look at another sequence, this one is quite different from the four species sequences that we've looked at previously. But then if we look at another one, we can see that this sequence here and this sequence here are identical. So as we're looking at more species and we're sequencing more species, we can start to make um, more links in terms of looking at relationships between them all. These two species have got the same sequence, so they are um, very closely related to one another. And this species also has a very similar DNA sequence to this one. So we've sort of we've started to look at the sequences and we've seen that some organisms, uh, sorry, some species are very similar to one another um, and others are less so. So we could actually sort of group them together. So these three are very closely related to one another. These two are very closely related to one another. And these three are very closely related to one another. And what we could do is we could take that and we could then construct um, a phylogenetic tree. So phylogenetics is just the study of evolutionary relationships between organisms. So if we make a phylogenetic tree, it just means um, it's just a diagram to show those evolutionary relationships and it will be based on DNA sequences. So here are our first organisms and we've saw, we saw previously that these two have got um, identical sequences so therefore they are very closely related. So this shows that they share a common ancestor with each other. Here's our third species that we know is related to the other two 
but slightly less so. So we can link these together like this. These two are more closely related. So this is kind of like going back in evolutionary history. So these two are more closely related. So this point here is more recent. This one is linked to these two, but further back. OK, so it's like this is now. As we move back here, we're going further back in evolutionary history. So the point here where all three of them um, diverge from one, one another is further back in the past because this is less um, closely related to these two. Then we've got these two sequences and we know that they are very closely related to one another. And then these two are also very closely related to one another. And this one is closely related to these two. So we can link it like this. And then we have to try and link the three groups together. We can see that these species, if we look at the sequences, they are more similar to this group than they are to this group. So that means that these two groups share a more recent common ancestor with one another than they do to this group. So what we can do is we can link together these groups like this. So this is where they have a common ancestor. This group is very similar to each other, but less similar to our yellow and green species uh, sequences. So when we link them together, this point here is further back in evolutionary history. So point X here represents the species that is the common ancestor for all of these species. So at some point in evolutionary history, there was a species and this species over time evolved in different directions through speciation events and so on. And all of these are ancestors of species X. If we look at species Y and Z, species Y is a common ancestor for the yellow group and the green group, all of those species, but Y is not a common ancestor for the species that are blue. And likewise Z, and any, again, I've picked this point, but you know, any species, if you imagine this is sort of evolutionary time, so species form new species and new species. The individual represented by Z is a common ancestor for all of these three species here. A is a common ancestor for these two, but not for this one, because this species has already branched off. It branches off here. A does not lead on to this species. B is a common ancestor for these two species, but not for any of the yellow or the blue species. And finally, C is a common ancestor for all of the yellow species. Oh, not finally, this is the final one. D is therefore a common ancestor of these two species, but not for this species here. So what we've done is we've used the similarity of the DNA sequence to work out which individuals are more closely related to one another. We've used that to construct a phylogenetic tree. And once we've got our phylogenetic tree, we can identify where common ancestors were for different groups of species based on how closely related they are. Okay, that's all. Thank you very much. Goodbye.